Hello, and welcome back to Sharpshooter Wrestling. If this is your first time here, remember to hit that like and subscribe button and elbow smash that notification bell to stay up to date when I drop future videos. Now, being an enormous Bret Hart fan ever since I was a little kid, there's been a lot of memories of a lot of great matches he's had. He's the master of the squared circle and is truly the best there ever will be. Today, I'm going to go over my five all-time favorite Bret Hart matches. Number five, Bret the Hitman Hart versus the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith Jr. They be squaring off for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. This was the main event at SummerSlam 1992 at London's Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 plus screaming wrestling fans. It was a spectacle in front of the capacity crowd. As the two locked up, you could feel their competitive spirits. Brett did his best to keep the Bulldog grounded to the mat, taking away Davy Boy's strength and power and attacking the body and looking for a pinfall where he could. This was a grueling seesaw battle back and forth, but the British Bulldog was doing a great job at displaying his own technical game, grounding Brett to the canvas, working Brett's upper body. The confidence of the Bulldog was shining bright on this night. A lot of near falls, headlocks, headbutts, and backslides. A very even matchup until the 15 minute mark of the match where Brett took over, using the neck yoke, trying to put the Bulldog to sleep, but the strength of Davy Boy could not be denied. Near fall after near fall, neither competitor wanted to quit. What a match this was! Brett could not get Davy Boy Jr. in the middle of the ring when he applied the sharpshooter, which may have been Brett's only mistake of the matchup. Because moments later, after the Bulldog made it to the ropes and broke the hold, a reverse Irish whip into a sunset flip into a pinning combination was the key to victory for the British Bulldog, becoming the new WWF Intercontinental Champion. And even though Brett lost, this was still a great match that I will never, ever forget. Respect and honor between the two, and a match I can watch over and over, again and again. Number 4. Brett the Hitman Hart vs. The Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels the main attraction of WrestleMania 12 was the main event between Bret the Hitman Hart and the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels. This was a match you don't see often. It was an Iron Man match, where the winner would be the wrestler with the most pinfalls after one hour. It was a battle, so close and such a tight contest that neither wrestler gave in to the other, and at the end of the 60 minute mark, neither Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart were able to pick up a single pinfall. So it was then ordered by on-screen president Rowdy Roddy Piper to continue under sudden death rules. So whoever picked up the first pinfall would walk out of WrestleMania 12 as the WWF champion. Brett worked a small of the back, but Michaels came out of nowhere with a super kick. Both men took a moment to collect themselves. Sean did it a little bit faster than Brett. With those few extra moments though, Sean was able to connect one more time with a super kick, dropping Brett and covering him for the one, two, three picking up the pinfall, and fulfilling his boyhood dream of winning the WWF Championship, which made for a memorable WrestleMania moment. And what a moment it was. From top to bottom, this match had it all. One of the best WrestleMania matches of all time, and I absolutely loved it. Number 3. Bret the Hitman Hart versus the King of Hearts, Owen Hart. The Hart brothers have an undeniable bond that carried to their love of wrestling. From the dungeon in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, to the WWF, these two were destined for greatness from the start. Brett was always a standout star between the two, and Owen wanted the same recognition, but without the titles and marquee matches and mainstream attention, it was hard to acknowledge him on the same level as Brett. This struck a nerve with Owen and filled him with jealousy. So when Owen went one-on-one -on -one with Brett at the SummerSlam pay-per-view in 1994, the chemistry and passion could definitely be felt by everyone in attendance. It was a steel cage match that excited and entertained the crowd for over half an hour. It was a clinic of two brothers displaying their technical skills on the canvas, proving to each other and everybody watching how good they both really are. Brett wanted Owen to know he doesn't hate him, but Owen's blind rage for Brett turned out to be his downfall. It was a dogfight in a steel cage, and only one would come out on top. This was my all-time favorite steel cage match. They beat the crap out of each other, but still proved that these two brothers were the top technical pair of the Hart family. Owen attacks Brett right off the hop. A back and forth battle as these two fought to escape the steel cage. Exhaustion and fatigue hit both the Hart brothers, but after all, this was for the WWF Championship. The crowd was electric and on the edge of their seats. As Owen was moments away from escaping the cage, Brett somehow stopped his brother. Next would come the famous superplex. From the top of the cage, Brett delivers a powerful suplex, destroying his brother Owen. 
Somehow, Brett mustered the strength to crawl out the cage, but again, Owen stopped him and slapped him in the sharpshooter. Owen screams he's going to break his brother's legs. Brett counters with his own sharpshooter. Owen escapes somehow. This was a very evenly matched contest. Both men made an attempt to climb up and escape the cage, but as they were both close to dropping down, Owen's leg got stuck in the cage, and Brett drops down winning and retaining the WWF Championship. If you haven't seen this iconic steel cage match, I suggest you go back and watch it. It's a classic matchup by two wrestlers fighting for gold and recognition. In my opinion, it's the best steel cage match in history. Number 2. Bret the Hitman Hart vs. Rowdy Roddy Piper It was WrestleMania 8. And Bret Hart was looking to regain his Intercontinental Championship. But if he was going to become a two-time IC champ, he was going to have to go through the rowdy one. Rowdy Roddy Piper. These two traded arm drags and challenged each other to a test of strength to start the matchup. This had a street fight feel to it. Piper even gave Bret a dirty sucker punch. Anything to gain an advantage over the Hitman. At one point, Piper even bit Brett, but I think the short punches caused the Hitman to be busted wide open, wearing a crimson mask by the end of the matchup. This was a short match, and at the 16 minute mark, Roddy Piper would throw Bret Hart into the referee, giving him time to ram Bret face first into the ring steps and grab the ring bell. This was the perfect time to take advantage, with the ref out of action and Bret all bloody not able to stand. Piper stood over Brett holding the ring bell, motioning he was going to take the easy way out, clobbering Brett and picking up the victory. But just as Piper was going to smash Brett with that ring bell, he was having second thoughts, and against the heel side of him, he tossed the foreign object to the outside. This hesitation gave Brett enough time to recover, and when Piper went for a sleeper hold, Brett used the corner to push off and push Roddy into a pinning predicament and picked up the victory and the Intercontinental Championship title. To the surprise of many, Piper must have respected Brett's efforts because he helped Brett up after the match. He even helped Brett fasten the title around his waist. This is the kind of sportsmanship the wrestling business needs to have. Not only does it promote good matches, but it also promotes respect for your fellow competitor. Two thumbs up for this one. Number 1. Bret the Hitman Hart vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin WrestleMania 13, the grandest stage of them all. The heel Stone Cold Steve Austin would take on the face of the company, Bret the Hitman Hart, in a submission match. And some say the greatest match in WrestleMania history. Bret Hart was an established mainstay of the WWE, while Stone Cold was a man on the way up. His mic skills and connection with the crowd were tight, and his ability to beat his opponent senseless was undeniable. There was nobody like him in the locker room. Austin was obsessed with Bret and just had to beat him, so when he got the chance to go one-on-one -on -one with the Hitman, he wasn't going to miss it. His anti-authority type attitude and his ability to capture a crowd was something that few, if any, were able to do. It all lined up perfectly. Vince wanted this match to feel as real as possible, so he went out and got a submission specialist from the UFC, Ken Shamrock, to be the special guest referee. The match began with Austin attacking Bret viciously, starting in the ring, then over the guardrail and into the WWE Universe. Weapons and foreign objects were used to dismantle each other. This was exciting stuff. The match then shifted to Bret targeting and attacking Austin's knee. This was playing into the hands of the Hitman. The in-ring technical work of Brett was used to this type of attack. It was second nature and a natural game plan for the Hitman. As the match went on, the crowd was becoming more on the side of the heel Stone Cold and turning on their hero Bret Hart. But by the end of the match, Austin was left on the canvas covered in a pool of his own blood. Brett had Austin in the middle of the ring, locked in the sharpshooter, with nowhere to go. Austin would not tap out, and instead, he passed out from the pain and lost the blood. The contest ended with Brett destroying his babyface image. This sealed Brett as a villain, while at the same time putting Austin at the face of the company. It was a double turn, and it was awesome, and it was also what was best for business. The pink and black attack was the best thing going in wrestling, and if he wasn't forced into retirement, he would have had many more great matches to add to my favorite matches of the Hitman. That's going to do it for me, but thank you so much for watching, and leave a comment on what your favorite Bret Hart match was, and if it wasn't in my list, let me know what the match was, and I'll catch you next time here at Sharpshooter Wrestling.